Hi, I'm Paula Storm. Today, I thought it'd be fun to give myself a challenge. Oh, give me a minute. Now you want to come back in, don't you? Oh, what's the matter? Hey. <laughs> oh, 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 puppy. Settle. Okay, I'll scratch you. Is that better? Is that better? Okay, down your hop. Oh, you're a crazy dog. Hi, I'm Paula Storm. Today, I thought it'd be fun to give myself a real challenge. Now, I'm not the best at making bags, but I'd really like to be. So what I thought I'd do is start out with the same basic pattern or the same basic idea of a bag and try and make it in three different ways. I also thought I'd give myself a time limit to make it a bit more interesting. So the first bag I'll try to whip up in maybe like 15 minutes. The second I'll give myself about an hour. And the third I'll give myself unlimited time to see what I can make uh, with this same basic bag pattern. So let's go craft up a storm. <laughs> You're a bugger. Okay, so let's get started on the first bag. Now I've got 15 minutes for this first one and I thought I'd use this really cute fabric that I've got in my stash. I thought this bag might be good for um, a library bag because it's going to be quick um, and hopefully I'll get it done in time. Okay, so I've got 15 minutes on my timer. Let's go. Ooh, I hope I can get it done. Okay, so I haven't decided how I'm going to do this other than I know what the basic pattern is. It's really quick and easy. I saw this pattern, um, I think, when we were overseas. Um, someone got a bag from a shop and it was just a paper bag or a very, very light fabric bag. And, um, and the way the bottom was folded up was really intriguing to me. So I thought I'd give that a try. I, okay, so this is, I've cut out a strip of fabric that is uh, 12 inches wide and it's the width of the fabric. So that's what we're going to go with. Oh, that could use a bit of a press. So let's quickly grab out the ironing board. Oh, I know what I can do. So I might just cut off the top a little bit and use that to make the handles because I hadn't really decided how I was going to do the handles yet. Let's get rid of this. That's going to have to do for my 15 minutes. So you fold it like this and to get the base of the bag, you basically just fold up that bottom edge there. And when you sew these side seams, it creates an automatic <laughs> boxed um, base for the bag. So after wasting a good minute trying to decide on my measurements, I finally landed on 18 inches by 12 inches. So that of course is on the fold. So the 18 inches would actually be double because it's on the fold. I used the top half or the top portion of the strip that I cut off to cut my handles. And I cut these to measure three inches by that same 12 inches. I folded it in half, pressed it, fold the edges in and pressed it again. Oh my goodness, five minutes is already gone. Okay, now another thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm just going to fold over about a half inch at the top there. And then I'm going to fold that again. Whoop. Okay, I'm going to do the same at the other end. And then what I'm going to do once I've sewn these, I might just stick those underneath and sew that into the seam and then I'll flip it up and top stitch across there. I hope that'll work. So I've got those bits together and I'm just going to fold up. I think that'll do. Oh my goodness. I'm really scared that I'm not going to make it this time. Okay, 
So what I need to do is take this to the machine and just so these two side seams all the way down and then I'm also going to top stitch these two strips so I'm going to top stitch down the edge just to hold that together so that I can then pop that in as the handle. So let's head over to the machine. Okay so I've just got the machine set on a straight stitch. Oh I probably should have changed my threads. Oh I don't have time. Okay so I'm just going to top stitch down that long edge. Okay, so I'm sewing straight up the edge from the base of the bag and I'm going to give myself a good 3 8 inch seam. I'm going to reverse on this one. Oh. And so I've got that fold there and I'm just sewing straight up the edge. I'm going to snip that handle off and I'll snip that one off. I really should top stitch both sides, shouldn't I? Oh, let's quickly, how much time have I got? Oh, I've only got six minutes. Okay, let's quickly just top stitch that other edge. Okay, so let's go back over here for a second. So we've done that seam. Oh, I need to overlock those edges. Okay, this is crazy. Um, now I need to fit, pick an overcast stitch. So let's grab out my J foot. Because I don't want any raw edges. Now, which one is it? I can't remember. Um, is it that one? No. There we go. Okay. Oh my goodness. That was a lot of wasted time. So that's that first bit. Now let's get these handles in. I'm just going to snip off those threads. Oh, two and a half minutes. Okay, let's fold that under. Maybe I should have given myself 30 minutes. Oh my goodness, the more I'm trying to rush, the more I'm freaking myself out. Oh, okay, let's just shove that in there. I don't have time to measure it. It's going to have to be close enough. Oh my goodness, can I do this in a minute and a half? Oh, wrong foot, wrong foot. Oh. Okay, back to our straight stitch. seconds to go. Have I got time? 10 seconds. Oh, I don't have time. Okay, let's come back over here and turn it through. So I'm just going to fold those corners. My time's up. Wow. That was crazy. <laughs> okay, so this is what I've got. I've got my little bag. I haven't got the handles top stitched, which I wish I had have had time because otherwise they just sit inside. Although, when I think about it, this might actually be better for a shopping bag because for a shopping bag, you want to be able to fold it up and store it nice and neatly, nice and small. So they, this might actually be better as a little shopping bag. And if I'd put a little pocket on the front here, that could have folded in on itself and been a self-contained little shopping bag. Might try that next time. 
Okay, so basically what I love about this design and this pattern is that when you fold out the corners, here's the boxed corners that I was promising you. So when you fold it out like this, I just like to finger press it with my nails and then I'll do the other side just by folding it out and finger pressing like that it gives me a little boxed corner. So I actually made a little small one. Let me show you here. So I made this little small pouch just to see if this, this concept would work. And basically when you fold those edges in and finger press the sides like that, it will actually sit up on its own like a little, a little pouch. Isn't that just the cutest thing? So that's the basic pattern. That's what we're going for. We're going for um, a bag where we fold up the bottom edge and sew those two side seams. Now, I wonder what I can do with a bit more time. I think I would be able to make the handles look a bit better. I think if I hadn't top stitched that second um, hand side of the handle, I think I would have been able to top stitch that edge. I really want to do that. But anyway, so with the second one, I'm going to give myself a bit more time. And what we're going to try and do is add a, po a pocket to the front um, so that we can make it into a self-folding um, shopping bag. But as a library bag, I think this is pretty good. You can put some, um, some books in there. And if you needed that extra gusset at the bottom, it would fold out and fit quite a lot in it. So I'm pretty happy with that one. What do you think? Why don't you leave me a comment in the um, down below and tell me what you think of my 15 minute effort. All in all, I'm happy with my 15 minute bag. So let's take a break. I need a break after that. My kids just got home from school. So we'll be back tomorrow and um, have a go at a, let's go a one hour bag. It's been a few days and I'm still really happy with my first 15 minute bag that I made. So this time I've decided I'm gonna make a few changes. Mainly what I'm gonna do is make the bag a bit wider because this one, as I mentioned, I wanna turn into a shopping bag. So I'm gonna make this a little bit wider. I'm going to put a little tag in the top here so that you can attach it on the, um, on the shelf at the supermarket so you can pack your bag easier. And I'm also gonna put a pocket on the front so that um, this the second bag can fold into itself. So it doesn't take up as much room in your handbag and so that you've always got one on hand when you go shopping. So I'm gonna make those changes to the second bag. I've got this fabric here, which I just again found in my stash. It's nice using up fabric that I uh, have had in my stash for a long time. Oh, look at that selvage. That would make amazing numbered pins. If you haven't seen that video from last week, check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description box below. Um, these would make fantastic pins. Okay, so I'm going to use this fabric and I've got a, a, a fabric that um, I bought obviously at the same time. So I think this one will look great as a bag, as a um as the, the little pouch that I'm gonna put on the front. So I might use that one for that. Okay, so this time I'm gonna give myself an hour uh, and see what I can come up with. So last time we had 15 minutes and I didn't quite make it. So this time let's see if I can make all of these improvements and still get it done in the time limit. So we're gonna do this one, we're gonna do um, on a time lapse. So I'm gonna speed through this one so that we've got plenty of time for the third bag. So let's get our hour started.
Okay, so there we have it. That is the second bag. And I made it in plenty of time, just 40 minutes it took me to do this one. So we can stop that now. Now, I am so far really happy with this bag. So we did the exact same thing as the first one, except that I added an extra little tag in here so that you can hang this. <laughs> I just realized I should have put this on the opposite side to the pocket. That was a bit silly of me. But basically you can hang that on the um, at the shopping center or at the checkout. You can hang that on so that your bag doesn't um, fall down and so you can stack it easily. But I was able to top stitch my handles this time, which I'm really happy about. So I got that second line in, which holds those handles up in the upright direction. Um, so much happier with that. I got my little pocket on uh, to fold that up. So let's have a go and see if I can get that to work. So I'll just pop those handles in. Okay, so I'm going to fold that in half and in half again. So then all I'm going to do is flip it inside out and pop the bag inside. It's a little bit tight. It could have been a fraction bigger maybe but I think I'm going to get there. Could be a little bit neater. I think maybe the pocket should have been just a fraction bigger, maybe another half an inch taller and then that would have sat in there a bit neater. But all in all I'm pretty happy with that. So there's our second bag. Let's open it back up again. There we go. So there's our shopping bag. I am really happy with this. I love the fabric. I think that's just absolutely gorgeous. Let's bring out the first bag. So the things I'm much happier with on my second bag is that the handles look much neater. They're much more even. And I actually like the extra width of the second bag as well. Oh, I better check those corners. So yeah, they're going to box out really nicely. So I don't think I showed you um, quite clearly enough on that first bag. Basically, when you open up the bag, it will automatically create that boxed corner for you. And if I do this second side, if this was a stiffer fabric, it would have been much clearer. But basically, see how it creates that, that flat bottom of the bag, like you get from a boxed corner. I hope you can see there. It has that flat base created there. So that's bag two. Let's try for bag number three. I better go and find some more fabric. All right, I'm back from my fabric stash and I found this fabric here. I absolutely love this fabric. Um, I bought it while we were in Japan. It's one of my absolute favorites. And I was going to use it for this piece, this um, third bag, but unfortunately this is a directional print. So the deer heads are all facing in one direction, which would mean on one side of the bag it would be right side up, like that. But on the other side they would be upside down. So I've got these fabrics, they're a little bit heavier than I've been using. So the other two bags that I made are made out of a quilter's cotton, whereas these are a coker. So they're a... Um, they feel a bit like a linen, but they're a much heavier uh, fabric. So I'm going to use those ones. I'm going to use the spots on the outside and I'm going to use the check for the lining. So let's get started on bag three. Now, as I mentioned, oh, I better start my timer. So this time, instead of counting down time, I'm actually going to be counting up to see how long it takes me. I've learned quite a lot from the first two bags. So I think this one is going to be really interesting. Okay. So I've decided I want this bag to be a handbag instead of um, a library bag or a shopping bag. So I want this one to be more short and I want it to be longer. So I'm going to make this one, I think about 15 inch, I'm going to cut it at 15 inches wide and then I'll make it as tall as I possibly can um, with the fat quarter that I've got here. So I wanted to use a fat quarter this time um, just to show you that it is possible. Okay, I'm going to trim off that top. I'm going to have to fold that because all my long rulers are over there. <laughs> okay, so let's see how long I can make it. So that's 
10 and a half inches on the fold. So let's get rid of that. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with my liner. I'm gonna cut it out to the exact same size. Okay, so I've sewn these strips together. So I cut um, one and a half inch strips out of the leftover from my um, spotty fabric, which is gonna be my outside of the bag. And I'm gonna use these for handles and also um, little tabs because I'm gonna make these handles a little bit different to the, the last two bags. So I'm gonna turn these through um, and the the last piece that I've got here out of the leftover of the check fabric, I'm gonna turn into a pocket. So that one's, that's what that one's for. So I'm just gonna poke this through the right way. Okay, so I'm almost finished. I've just got to turn my bag through. Did I get my magnet right? Yep, my magnet's right and my handles are right. <laughs> that surprises me. It's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna get this top stitched. I'm gonna get that inside hole closed up and we'll see what we're left with. I think I'm done. Let me just trim off those threads. So let's open up that base. That base actually holds a lot better with the lining in. So it holds that box corner. You can see there. It holds that box corner a lot neater um, by having a liner inside, which is interesting. Um, I, think, I think I'm happy with this one. <laughs> so here's my final bag. This is bag number three. I think that's cute. It has a magnet inside. It also has a pocket. And there we go, that's bag number three. So let's grab the other two bags. So we have bag number one, which, oh, we can stop this now. So there we go, an hour and a half. Not bad to make this um, little purse bag. I think my, one of my kids would love that. One of my, maybe my youngest daughter. I think she would really like that bag. Okay, so we've got bag number one. Our library bag, which I'm really happy with. I am going to go back and top stitch those handles to make sure that they lay down nice and flat. But in 15 minutes, I'm pretty happy with that. We've got the second bag, which took 40 minutes uh, and folds in on itself so that I can use that as a shopping bag. Again, it's got the boxed corner, so it's going to fit lots of groceries in there. So again, really happy with that one. And our final one and a half hour bag. I love it. So what have I learned? I've learned that I'm not a great bag maker 
and I don't think I ever will be. I've learned that you can make a bag in 15 minutes. So if I had my, um, my daughter lose her library bag, for example, it wouldn't take that long to whip up a new library bag for her, although she's getting this one. I've definitely learned from that experience. I really like the size of this bag a bit better. So I think I can't really choose a favorite. I love the fabric of this one. That's definitely my favorite fabric. But I really like this one too. And I think if I had have added some um, batting in there, some bag batting, I think this would have stood up on its own. Um, the handles could have dropped down like that and it would have stayed standing up. So I, I do, I am really happy with that. I love my lining. I realized I made a mistake and I didn't actually stitch the pocket, but I've just got one big pocket in there, which will fit my phone perfectly. So I'm just gonna leave it. So there we have it. I've made three bags all up in about two and a half hours, just under two and a half hours. So I'm really happy with that. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video. I would love it if you would hit the like button. Uh, please subscribe and leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you'd like me to have a go at next. Um, I actually want to make some of these little findings for bags. I would like to make some of these out of resin um, so that I can make my own, put glitter in it and make all sorts of uh, fancy things. So if you'd like to see that, I'd love you to comment and let me know. So that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed watching me make these three bags. Um, I would love you to come back next time. Someone's back. Rocket. Come on. <laughs> you gonna say hello? <laughs> this is my little buddy. This is Rocket. So thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Bye. Say bye. <laughs>